Hi everybody, this is Luke D and this is Mechanisms of Cancer and today we're going to be talking about the cell cycle and specifically how signals affect the cell cycle. Cell cycle signaling wow, is really, really important because signaling is how cells detect their out exterior environments. So there's lots of different types of signals that a cell can receive and the type of signal a cell can receive is based on the type of receptors it has. So there are receptors for growth signals, there are receptors for mitogens, there are receptors for anti-growth signals, there are receptors for concentration gradients of certain hormones or proteins that are in the environment that will tell a cell what position it is in. There are also mechanoreceptors that sense pressure, baroreceptors that also sense pressure, integrins and cadherins which can sense other cells. So all of that information is going to be integrated into the decision, I guess, um, the cell is going to make on whether to divide. So generally you're going to want the presence of mitogens, you're going to want the lack of stop growth factors, you're going to want food in the environment, and you're going to want low pressure on the cell. So you're going to want it to sense very few cells around it. After binding to a receptor, or after the signal comes to the outside of the cell, that signal is transferred to the inside of the cell, generally through something called a cellular cascade. So that's what we have labeled here as intracellular signaling proteins. Basically, this guy will activate this guy, will activate this guy, um, and that guy will then activate one of three likely outcomes. It'll change the way a cell is utilizing its food, it will change what proteins are available to a cell, and it'll change the shape of the cell. So those three are reflected by metabolic, metabolic um, gene regulation and uh, cytoskeletal changes. So usually what happens, and there's exceptions to this, is that a hydrophilic molecule will bind to a receptor, and that receptor will change shape on the outside, causing a change of shape on the inside. Now there are some exceptions to that, and there are a few that um, are important Estrogen, for example, can travel through membranes. Um, a couple other steroids can do that as well, and so they can go straight through the membrane and into the cell. The process by which a cell gets, or a molecule gets into the cell and travels to the nucleus is really important. So there are shuttling proteins that um, will take small molecules that can't travel by themselves in the uh, fluid around the cells um, and then we'll transfer them into the cell. So here you see a carrier protein and that's necessary because here our signal molecule is hydrophobic. Um, once it gets into the cell it's also probably going to need some kind of carrier molecule to bring it to the nucleus. This is just one type of cell uh, interaction that we were talking about earlier. So this is how a cell could sense another cell. Um, receptors involved here or cellular structures involved here are cadherins and integrins. Hopefully you guys saw that in your beast. Um, this is kind of uh, highlighting the sort of idea of a concentration gradient. But uh, this is termed paracrine. So here you have direct cell to cell contact. So one cell is touching another cell. Here, one cell is signaling cells around it. Um, and you can actually have endocrine signaling, which is even more uh, remote. So that's when a signal from your brain would travel down to your foot, or likely actually the other way, that one signal is traveling from one part of the body to another. OK. Now, some of the changes that we're going to be talking about are going to be cytoskeletal and changes in metabolism. but most of them are actually going to be in changes in gene expression. Depending on the rate, uh, sorry, depending on the mechanism of what happens after a cell surface protein is activated, um, the response time will change. So if, for example, a molecule binds to a receptor and then immediately activates or shuts down a protein, that reaction will be pretty quick. And so if that kind of reaction is what you want to see that kind of reaction you would want to see in, for example, muscle cells or nerve cells. Um, if you're going to activate gene expression, so if that receptor is going to activate a transcription factor, then you're not going to have that same speed. It's going to be generally around, you know, 10, 15 minutes, and it can go up to several hours that you'll see a response. Okay, so 
we talked about the different kinds of signals that a cell can receive, and we talked about how you can have different transcription factors um, all incorporating or all interpreting different signals and um, how they can cause expression of different proteins that will lead to different cell fates. Different levels of signals, for example, A, B, C, D, and he, E here, will give the cell different fates. Now, every cell has, is genetically identical in your body, or almost genetically identical. There are some mistakes and there can be some differences. But the general fates are going to be survive and not desire, desire, uh, divide. That's going to be the fate of most of your cells um, in the beginning. Um, oh, sorry, not quite, actually. Uh, the cells can divide, um, which is going to happen in your body right now in certain places, for example, your brain, your skin, but not all over your body. Your cells can differentiate, that's what I was talking about earlier. That's called G0. That green cell you see there is called G0. It is in a permanent state of arrest and it's probably not going to divide ever again. Um, or, of course, you can have a cell commit suicide that we call apoptosis. That is basically it for cellular signaling and the start of the um, cell cycle. If anybody tells you that the start of the cell cycle is the production of proteins, it is not. It is going to be those signals coming in. It's going to be the cell sensing its environment that starts off that entire process. That's a hugely important idea, especially when it comes to cancer therapies, because one of the things that we're going to start looking for in cancer therapies are what is on the cell surface that is receiving those signals. Have a great day, um, and I'll see you in class.